So we're going to start here on pixabay.com. I've done a search on paper texture, and I'm just using images here. The one we want is going to be on the second page. So I'm just going to go ahead and page past all these, click on next page. And what you can do is use the link down in the description to get to this paper texture right here. Let's go ahead and open that up. This is where the link will lead you. I'm going to tap on free download. I'm going to choose the largest available to me. Since I'm signed in, I can get the really great big one. And I'm going to say download. There are two things you can do here. You can either tap on view, and then once it comes up, you do a long press and save it to photos. Or if you're on a PC, or even here on your iPad, you can tap the download and tell it to download. And that will save it to your downloads folder on your iPad. Um, if you're on your PC, it'll save it to wherever you download your pictures. And you can then transfer that over to your Dropbox or your iCloud or wherever it is you share your files with for your Procreate. Now let's go into Procreate. I'm going to tap on the Actions menu, which is the wrench up at the top. Let's go over to Canvas and Canvas Information. As you can see, I have a square canvas, 2048 by 2048. 300 dpi, and this is an sRGB profile. So let's go to the Add menu under Actions. I'm going to say Insert a File, and we'll go to Downloads. Let's go down to the P's because this is a paper texture. We'll tap on that, and it imports it into here. Now I'm going to change this transform. From uniform to free form, that's right here. And that allows me to stretch this up and down using the center blue dots. Here's the one up at the top. I'm just going to drag that up, not quite to the edge, just so it stretches things out a bit. Now I'm going to tap on snapping, which is right here. I'm going to make sure that the magnetics is on. With magnetics on, when you tap on fit to canvas, third from the right, which is here, it'll stretch it out like this. And you get a nice perfectly square whatever's left. So we'll tap on the transform arrow again, right up here at the top. And then I'm going to go to this magic wand right here, which is the Adjustments menu. I'm going to go to Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. And I'm going to desaturate it. That's right here in the middle. We go from 50% all the way down to none. Tap on the Actions menu again. And here is your grayscale image. We'll tap on layer 1 and choose Copy. It's third from the top. I will create a new layer and I will turn this layer off. I'm going to start up a new brush. I'm in my paper textures here. We'll tap on the plus sign. We'll go down to Shape. Uh, nope, we'll go down to Grain which is right here, and we'll do Edit, and then Import, and then Paste. You can tap anywhere outside, and right here at the top, the second one over is Auto Repeat. It's right here on my iPad. I'm going to tap on that, 
And you see how you can see these shadow lines? I've got my border overlap as high as it'll go. I'm going to tap on mirror overlap, and that will help. Let's increase the grain scale. And see how that starts making it disappear even more? And there we go. I'm at 2.9, and you can't tell that there is a seam on here at all. We will tap on Done, and it will create the texture. Now that the texture is created, let's go to Rendering. And instead of Intense Glaze on Rendering, we're going to go to Light Glaze. We'll go down to Apple Pencil, and we're going to change this opacity here all the way down to None. I'm going to go to Properties, and the maximum size I'm going to change from 100 to 400. I can take the Orient to Screen off. We'll tap on Done, and there's our untitled brush. Let's go to About This Brush. Let's call this Watercolor Paper. And there we go. Um, as you can see, I did it here. I didn't title it, but I was just testing things out. Let's go to Properties. Yes, we want to go to Properties. I'm going to use a Stamp Preview. And Tab Done, and that gives us that little circle there. Let's increase the size to 50. See how that looks? That looks nice to me. And this allows you to paint across the paper this way. And you get a nice little paper texture. Let's go all the way up. And you can still see a bit of shadow, but you can definitely see that this is, in fact, A paper texture. I'm going to duplicate my layer and put it underneath the layer that I'm going to be drawing on. And the top layer, I'm going to change this to linear burn. The bottom layer, I'm going to change to multiply. And yeah, you know, I don't really like that. Let's change our grain scale. Let's really get this up here. Let's make it like that. And see how that paints in. That looks better to me. So now... You can go on to your layer 2. And draw whatever you want. And the next brush that we're going to be creating is this Watercolor Wash 2. Let's choose a different color. Oh, let's go for a blue. That's a nice color. And the joy of this is the paper texture is going to show through your colors. Now 
And there you go, a nice watercolor picture of, well, basically a squiggle. So the next brush we'll be creating will be the watercolor brush. I hope this helps you out, and I hope you have a wonderful day.